Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we are going to be using lots of dyes. So I'm using the Wooden Crate, the Spring Greenery, the Spring Vine, the Lovely Layer Strawberries, and then this is the Big Time Kindness set. We're going to be using that um, Sweet Friend sentiment because it matches the berries. It's kind of cute, summery, you know what I'm saying. Um, and then we're going to be doing this super easy coloring to add interest to a piece. Um, because sometimes we just don't, you know what I mean? Even I don't have time to just do all the coloring. So how are we going to do that? We are going to do some watercolor in our background. This is going to give us a basis for our um, additional Copic coloring that we're going to do. Uh, very minimal, honestly. Um, very minimal of. Uh, but this is Canson Monteval watercolor paper. That's my preferred. You use whichever one you like. And then I am squishing my distress ink. You could also use oxides or um, any other react water any other inks that are reactive with water. All of it would work. Or you could paint your background with watercolors if you're interested in doing that. This is just super fast. So basically, you smush it down, you spray it with some water, and then put your watercolor paper right in. I like mine to be very textured. I think it adds the most interest. And so I dip it in a few times. I dry it in between. I do splatters of paint. I do flat splatters of clean water and, you know, kind of pick that up. Don't be so... Don't be afraid of your end piece. Like if you think, oh my gosh, this is too much. This is over the top. It's not the way that I wanted it to look. Um, I promise you, once you die cut it, it's going to be fine. It's going to be better than fine. It's going to be great. Um, so here, I just picked two browns. I'm using, I think mine are brushed corduroy and ground espresso, but this is going to be my wooden crate. Uh, you could use grays for this, um, or some cooler browns would also work. I like a warmer brown. For my strawberries, I'm using a couple of different reds. Uh, honestly, <laughs> honestly, that candy apple kind of took right over everything. Um, but that's okay, because at the end of it, um, you know, they were still red, which is what strawberries should be. So a couple of just, just things that I noticed while I was doing this that I would like to share with you. Uh, I like having the whole background covered. I don't really want a lot of white spots. If you want a lot of the white spots, just use less water. If you want to break up the color in the background, two ways to do it. You can do splatters in the background and then dry them. That's really going to bleach them out. You can see that is what I'm doing here. Or if you want a little bit something more subtle, you could do splatters with clean water and then um, blot them up with a baby wipe. And you'll still get that color breaking up, but it will be um, less in your face. It will be a much more subtle. So here I wanted some darker red, so I went in with the fired brick. This did not really give me what I wanted. And you'll see we're going to come back to it Um to see what I did to try to get some more darker color. And one of them was a mistake. And I'm going to leave that in because I like to share those too. Because we're all, you know, learning together. For the green, this is my larger panel because I knew I was going to cut a couple of the um, big branches out of this as well as the top of the strawberries. And so here, again, I'm just using a couple of greens that I think will work nicely together. Um, the pine needles is more of a blue green, the mowed lawn and the twisted citron more of a yellow green. They all look nice. Everything looks good. So one of the things that I noticed with this is that I did get down um, a little bit too much water. And so I made myself a very flat watercolor background. You can see that here. Um, again, if you want more color variation or more texture, there's a couple of ways to fix this. So I'm going to dry this down in its current state. You can add splatters to it. You can bleach it by adding those clean water droplets. Or you can just add more pigment on top of it. And it will, it will break up that color. These are, with Distress Oxides, you can layer color. Uh, and you can do the same thing with Distress Inks, but to a lesser degree. So it's just not going, you'll still move your base underneath. Um, but that's what I did. I just put down some more of the other colors that I liked and then used less water and dipped it in. And then again, I'll be doing the spatters and those bleach marks to get the look that I know that I'm going to be happy with. And honestly, in the finished piece, the leaves are some of my favorite portions of the card. 
Because when you look at them, they have all these different spatters and textures, and they just look really, really interesting, and I love that. So this is, I was telling my husband, which is so funny, um, because normally my videos are really long, uh, just because there's so much, but because all, like, this entire card is made with dyes, and I used a really uh, fast coloring technique, this is, like, the shortest video I've done in forever. I don't, I don't even know, like... 20 minutes. 20 minutes is nothing for me. Um, so here I tried to go back in with some aged mahogany to add some darker red and it just wasn't getting it done. So here's the mistake that I made and I'm going to share with you how I made it. So on the color wheel, if you mix two complementary colors, you can actually make a darker version of one of the colors. So you could see I put down a little bit of green and then I put down like three times as much red because I was trying to make uh, a desaturated red. What I didn't take into account was, first of all, I didn't mix them together. Second of all, there was too much white on my background and you could really see the green. Uh, but I've already done this and you guys know me, I'm not going to start over. I'm committed to this. So I spattered it with some water right after I blotted up the green to see if I could get rid of it. I could not get rid of it in its entirety. So what I did was I put down a good concentration of the candied apple, which is a very strong red. And then I went over the same exact areas. So the green is still in there, but it has so much red over top of it. It really does look like a darker red. So if you get some colors in your background that maybe you don't love, first try to blot them up. If that doesn't work, then try to cover them with a much higher concentration of the previous color. So now the crates are coming out of the brown, the greenery is coming out of the greens, and the strawberries are coming out of the red. I ran those all through. At this point, they are beautiful and very interesting. But if you are like me and you like a lot of dimension, that's where the Copics come in. And I only chose two colors for each one of these, and we're not even really going to do a whole lot. For the wood crate, I added a very dark shadow which, on what will be what the inside of the crate is. I also added a shadow underneath each of these slats. And there's on each end, there's like vertical slats as well. So those got colored in much darker. And then I'm going to blend that out with a medium brown. So for me, this is an E59 and an E57. Um... And so I'm just adding a little bit of shading from the left and the right. Because Copic markers are transparent, we are going to color over that watercolor, but it's not going to get rid of the texture. So all of that texture is still maintained. And especially for this top piece, if you don't have this wooden crate die, I mean, I highly recommend. You could put, so, you could put flowers in this, put fruit in it. You can just do so many things with it. But on the top piece, it embosses all of this wood grain, which is so fantastic. It's just, it's really, really well done. And so here when I'm going in and I'm adding my shading to the left and the right hand side, you'll see with the medium color, it isn't sitting in the embossing. It's glazing over top of it. So you can still see a good portion of that wood grain um, that's embossed in there. And it, it's beautiful. So these will stack up on top of each other. Um, and we'll get to that when we do the building. For the strawberries, a couple of things I did to the to the strawberries. Um, the first one is I went in and I wanted the, it embosses like the seeds inside, and I wanted the seeds to have a bit more dimension, but I didn't want to risk doing it with a Copic marker. So what I did was I went in with a Copic Safe Fine Liner and just dotted all of my seeds black. They look funny now, but that's okay. Hang tight. Um... And then again, I just picked a two color blend and I'm going to go in, I apologize that this first one's off the screen, when I'm like in the zone and I'm doing and I'm making, um, sometimes I don't always pay attention to the camera. <laughs> um, and so, especially with the dyes, I pull them closer to me to color them so I can see what I'm doing and um, the camera wasn't as zoomed in as it normally is. So my apologies. But anyway, I added just some shading up to the bottom and then kind of up the sides with my darkest red and then blended that out with a medium red. Um, and then you can still see all that beautiful watercolor and I just left them, I just left them as is. The top portion of it I'm not worried about because that will be covered up with its greenery. 
for these, one of the large bunches here is from the strawberries. That's the one we're coloring now. And then the other one is from the spring greenery. You don't necessarily need that. I just thought it would be nice to have another kind of type of leaf. Plus it let me do all of my die cutting at one time. <laughs> And you guys know how I feel about die cutting. I think dies are beautiful, but I don't love Mina die cutting. Um, and so here, again, I'm just following the embossed lines. And I've picked two greens, um, a medium and a light. And so I'm going in with the medium following in those lines and then just blending out with a yellow green. I'm not completely covering up the watercolor in the background, just going over it enough that these darker colors blend and still give us nice dimension um, so that our leaves don't look flat. For the other uh, green leaf, I'm going to do the same thing. And then for the strawberries, mostly I'm going to add shading um, to the bottoms. Or if it's one that I can tell is like where the center is, I'll add the shading to the center. So yeah, I was just telling my husband, like, this is the shortest video I've done in forever. And I don't... Um, that's just so bizarre to me. So I know that you guys typically will say like, you know, longer videos don't don't bother me or whatever, but do you like a short one every once in a while? I just, I mean, I don't aim on having a long or a short. Um, I just make what I make and however long it ends up being, it, en it ends up being. Um, but yeah, just this one came together super fast, which was great for me because I made it during Caitlin's nap time. And if you have youngins, uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about because it's, it, you got to hustle, you got to hustle to get it done. So now that all the coloring is done, the last thing, well, not the last, <laughs> um, the next thing to do to the strawberries is to put their little tops on. And for the most part, this was pretty easy for me to pick out which ones went with which ones. Um, I think one or two of the smaller ones kind of hung me up for a minute. But you can, as long as you look at the top edge, you can see which ones go with which ones. Um, and then as always, I tell you guys this every time I use a lovely layer set, Honeybee has the guides online. So if you have one of these sets, uh, you can just go to their website find the set that you're looking for and you'll see a digital download for a PDF so that you can um, see them and see how they go together. So this is the last thing that I did to the strawberries for now. Uh, and that was just to go right back in over those black dots and do just a little white highlight to help the seeds stand out. And this just, again, just gave them a little bit of added interest, gave a little highlight on that, that seed portion. Um, and it's got good contrast because we have that darker underneath. So then from there, I'm going to start building my strawberries to figure out where I want them to go. Uh, in the Lovely Layers die set, they have a die that will like do the flowers and all of that. I didn't want that. I wanted a box of berries um, and then, you know, just some greenery uh, around it. So here I've kind of laid them all out. I'm making sure with the top portion that the uh, berries are tucked in where they need to be. And then I'm going to start gluing them together. This, um, if you don't have, I'm a big fan of liquid glue. Not everybody is, but honeybee liquid glue gives you a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, it doesn't dry immediately. I mean, it dries pretty fast. Don't get me wrong. But if you are quick moving like here, I could tell that, um, that berry to the right wasn't quite right. So I was able to adjust it for these ones in the back. Like I put them down, but I, I moved them too quickly and the one on the right isn't adhered quite as well as it needs to be yet. So I'm just going to push that back down, hold it for a second until it is dry. Now I can pick up one bunch of berries, glue it to my crate, and then the other bunch of berries and glue it to my crate. Now I did glue them up a little higher on the left hand side than they needed to be, like they needed to be tucked down deeper into the crate. So again, that little bit of wiggle room is going to save me because I'm going to check it. I'm going to realize it's up a little bit too high and then I'm going to be able to just kind of squish it down just a smidge so that everything looks like it's actually tucked into the box. 
for the top portion of the box itself, God love us, you guys know, I don't love the bits of foam tape, but it looks so good. So I did put foam tape behind this top portion of the crate and then set it on top of the berries. Like, I'm not gonna pretend like cutting the little foam tape pieces wasn't tedious. It was, but it was worth it. Here, quickly realized that three was too many and two was going to be perfect. So I arranged my two how I wanted them to look. And then first of all, I'm gluing them to each other. And then from there, I'm going to glue them behind my strawberries. Now, eventually there'll be more adhesive put on them once it gets onto the card, but this is just to hold it together to make it one piece. And I think it looks super cute. For the little spring vine pieces, all of these layers have, this is how it would look horizontal, by the way. Uh, I went with a vertical card. But all of these pieces have embossing in with them as well. And so that's why you see me cutting out the middle piece. Um, and that's because it is blue on blue. You could pop that piece up if you wanted to, but I felt like I had enough dimension with my dies. Um, but it embosses it so that it gives it more interest in the center. For the sentiment, I uh, treated it with my anti-static tool, and then I am going to stamp it in our Brilliant White Pigment ink, and then heat set it with white detail embossing powder before I cut it out with the dies. This is, um, I just think this is a super fun, summery card. Um, you could send this literally, literally to anybody. I just think it's really fun. And I love how fast it was to come together because even though I love coloring, and I do, I do, it makes my heart happy. Um, sometimes it's fun to kind of play in, in other things. So using the Distress Ink or a watercolor base really... Um, besides being like quick and easy to do, it gives you an opportunity to get more out of the products that you already have. So if you already own them, there's no reason not to use them to create kind of like your own watercolor paper and then, you know, die cut whatever you want out of them to your heart's content. Here, building the card, I am going to, um, just, I put it on white. I tested it blue on blue and then on white. And I really liked the way that the, the quarter pieces on this particular die, I just am in love with. I love like the little petal lacy look on the corners. Um, super, super pretty. And, um, let's see if you can spot my boo-boo. Let's see. Can you spot my boo-boo? I did not spot my boo-boo until my card was already put together, and by then I didn't care. <laughs> so I adhered all of that down flat to a white card base, and then I'm going to put my strawberries um, in the center of it before I move on to adhering my sentiment. I think this is so cute, these little box of berries. So what is my boo-boo? I'm going to tell you. On the right-hand side, I have no scallops. Somehow or another, I aligned my cardstock so that I cut them off, and I literally did not even notice until my card was already built, and by then, like I said, I don't care. I don't think the person that I give this card to would be like, bro, where's the scallops? I, I don't think they'll notice, because I didn't. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's all right. Remember what we said before, it doesn't have to be perfect to be pretty. So mine is perfectly imperfect, and I'm okay with it. For the friend portion, it does overhang my crate. And so I did have to put some foam adhesive to make everything flush using my liquid adhesive on the portion that will sit on top of the crate. And then, of course, my uh, tweezers to put them together. I put that down. The way that this one's um, written is already kind of, it can be on a slant. So it's kind of perfect to, like, butt up against that uh, little um, crate. And then I use the little Hey There label for the finishing touches. You probably could have left the gems off of this, but I love a little bit of shine and sparkle. So these are the Aurora Borealis gems. And so I just put a couple to the left and the right of the sentiment. You could also put a few up at the top as well. Uh, that, that would be very pretty. And then to give this a little something extra. I am going to go in on three. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six strawberries. Um, 
to give some of them a little bit of extra shine, I'm going in with some glossy accents and putting that right over top of my die cut. You could do this before you put them together, but I didn't want to wait for it to dry. But something to note is when you put the glossy accents on top, it will absolutely 110% erase your white gel pen. So just something to to make note of. Uh, but that's it. That's the whole card. So please let me know if you're going to try this coloring technique. I'd love to see what you guys are making. Thank you so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.